Hey guys, this is Matt Core from ControlPaint.com, and today we're going to talk about concept art landscapes. Specifically, we're going to do thumbnails for concept art landscapes, and we're going to base them off of real photos. And if you watched the previous video, this technique is going to look very similar, because in a sense, that's what we were ramping up to. Here, this is going to be small paintings that eventually will pave the way for large full illustrations. But as I've set it up here, I have a photo reference on the top, which is a cool bay with interesting rock formations and beautiful water. And I want to take that general idea, the colors and the materials, but apply that to imaginary thumbnails. So I've got my four blank canvases down there, and I'm going to start painting in sort of the base colors. So here you can see I'm just laying out the sky and the water and the horizon line because I know that all four of these images are going to have this essentially as the same background. The only thing that's really going to change are the rock formations. So I'll spend a little time making this look correct, get the colors right, and then I can just copy it over to all four canvases. This is one of those times when working digitally is really handy. So now that I've got a base for all of these drawings, it's time to put in the interesting part, the foreground, middle ground, and background. Do you remember the last video we did? How I made these really small on purpose so I didn't have to worry about details? Same thing applies here. I can use a big brush, worry about shape and color and design, and not so much about the small stuff. Now you might notice here that I'm not just painting one thumbnail at a time. This is just a personal preference, but you can work any way you like. My thinking here is it's sort of like an assembly line. Once I've done the first one and kind of got a sense for how these are going to look, I can really go through the motions on the rest of these and sort of make more efficient use of my time this way. So on one layer, I'm going to be painting the sort of rock shapes. This is a very graphic process. I'm thinking in design language. I'm using those principles of design that we talked about for composition, and I'm really just thinking of what would make this look interesting. You'll notice there's no shading in at this point or any of that. I'm just getting interesting shapes. Then once I'm done with this phase, I, I can go back over all of those shapes and begin to add in the lighting information. And for this, I'm using clipping masks. And as you've seen in previous videos, clipping masks are a great way to do overlays without worrying about going outside of the lines. And once I finish with the rock portion of this, I'll go back and start adding in the foliage. Same deal here. I'll work on all the thumbnails at one time, and I'll put in just the shape of the bushes. This is the primary shape. And then once I'm done with just the bush shape, I can go ahead and make another layer, make a clipping mask out of it, and put in the bush highlights. This allows me to just put in the detail, not worry about going outside of the lines, very quick. Now that I've got all the big shapes, it's time to just sort of make it all fit together. So there's things like reflections in the water. There's also a little bit of sand at the bottom of each of these rocks. Well, since I've been using layers for each of these different components, adding this stuff in is no problem. I'll just make a new layer that's below the rock formations on the layer stack, and then I'll begin painting in the reflections and paint in the sand. You'll also notice that the sky is the same on each of these images. So now is a good time to go back and add in different cloud shapes, just to make each of these thumbnails different from one another. So your assignment is to make environment thumbnails. I don't care how many you make, but I want them to be based off of a real photo. So just like I've done here, take the core essence of a cool photo, but make it bigger, make it more exciting. Don't limit your composition to the shapes found in the original photo. Make the shapes interesting. Just borrow the colors and materials found in the real world. This is a surefire way to make interesting concept art. I will remind you though, this technique is much easier if you've done it from real world studies. So if you haven't watched the previous video, go ahead and watch that and give this a bit of practice. But before you know it, you'll be making cool landscape thumbnails. Thanks for coming to Control Paint, guys.